So now that we've got some of the big laptop reviews for early 2018 out of the way, we're going to start doing some verses today. Surface Book 2 versus the X1 Yoga. Stay tuned. All right, so before we get started, these laptops are both, well, very high-end and premium devices. If you're on a budget, neither one of these are going to be good choices, but they do represent sort of that new hybrid style laptops and what I think are the best form factors, but they do it in different ways. Now, I know you guys are going to look for a clear winner here, but it's really going to come down to personal preference as both of these laptops I rated very highly. They do have some pros and cons for each and I kind of wish I can combine both of them, but let's go through those specifications and get down to the nitty gritty. All right, let's talk about the processors first. So surprisingly, both of these are the same, at least on the high-end model. With the ThinkPad, you're going to get a few more options, as Lenovo is always a big fan of that, but let's talk high-end stuff. So you're talking about the Intel 8th generation 8650U for both of these. These are technically 15 watt chips, but they can actually rate a little bit higher. So they go up to around 20, 25 watts for boosting. And they are quad core. The ThinkPad, surprisingly, although a little bit smaller, they don't throttle back that processor. It does perform very well, but as a result, it can run a little hot. Surface Book 2 can also run a little hot, but since its processor is behind the display, you won't quite feel it in your lap as much. You're not going to hear the fans as much either, but they both run very well. Now when it comes to RAM, we're going to talk about 16 gigabytes, again, DDR3. So nothing too amazing there, and both of these are soldered on options, so you got to order it configured and just be happy with it. Now for storage, you get a bunch of options. Both of these are PCIe, so it's gonna be very fast drives. You can get up to one terabyte in both of them. But in terms of raw speed, the ThinkPad is going to win out. It chips with the Samsung PM981, which is a blazingly fast SSD. And it's, in fact, the fastest one you can get right now with over 3,000 read speeds and 2,000 writes. It's just a killer. Now, the Surface Book 2, it's got a good SSD in it, but it's not going to perform nearly as well. Plus, of the ThinkPad, you can actually open it up and swap it out where you can't do that here. So, if you're looking for storage solutions and for the fastest one out there, well, the ThinkPad's going to win out. Now, when it comes to the real performance difference between these two devices, it's obviously in graphics. So, the 13-inch Surface Book 2 ships with an NVIDIA GTX 1050. If you go for a 15-inch model, you get the GTX 1060. These are both very good gaming-level GPUs, and you can do gaming on both of these. They're just excellent choices. What do you get with the X1 Yoga? Well, nothing really. You'll get the Intel UHD 620. Now, don't get me wrong, the UHD 620 is a fine GPU for web browsing and working Word, and that's what this laptop is meant for. It's meant for productivity, after all, not gaming. But yeah, you're not gonna get any graphics boost in here. I kind of would have liked to see the MX150 thrown in there just for that little extra boost, but you're not even going to get that. All right, what about keyboards? Well, these are both winners in my book. I really, really like the Surface Book 2's keyboards. In fact, all the Surface devices, in my opinion, have very good keyboards, but we can't deny the legacy of Lenovo. I mean, people really are stuck on these keyboards, and for good reason. Even I enjoy using this and have a hard time giving it up. But honestly, either one of these keyboards are gonna be really good. They have a lot of travel on them. They're both backlit. Now you do get the track point system with the Lenovo. If that's important, again, for some people, they absolutely rely on it, think it's the best thing in the world. I still haven't converted to it, although it's on my to-do list in 2018. Well, what about track pads? Uh, again, Surface Book 2, a little bit bigger, just because it does have that track point system, so it's gonna be taller. Also glass, it's using precision touch pads. And the X1 Yoga here, well, it's not as big, but it's a pretty good size. I really don't have any complaints about it, but those track point buttons do, you know, take away from some of that space. But you are getting precision touchpad drivers here as well. Now, if I really had to choose, Surface Book 2 is going to be the winner, but I can't really complain about this trackpad. It's solid. Now, let's talk about the display. So this is going to be sort of, again, personal preference. These are both very good displays. Now, you're talking higher resolution with Surface Book 2 slightly it's nothing crazy 3000 by 2000 but it is 13 and a half inch but the real big difference here of course is that aspect ratio it's going to be three by two 
And I'm a convert to that. I've already written an editorial about it saying how I just absolutely prefer it. And it's one of the reasons why I have a tough time switching away from the Surface Book 2 is because of that. And it's one reason I really like the MateBook X Pro. Now the ThinkPad, you'll get the traditional 16 by nine display, which I don't care for as much. I just feel everything is squished, but for some people, they really still like it. So there you go. Now, the benefit though with the ThinkPad is of course, you get that Dolby Vision HDR, at least in the high-end model, but it's $180 extra, which in my opinion is totally worth it. It is an outstanding color display. We're talking 100% Adobe color accuracy and 100% sRGB, plus it gets over 500 nits of brightness. It's just stunning looking. And I don't know, I wish I could take the Dolby Vision and put it into this aspect ratio. So this is kind of a wash in my opinion, again, some of you are going to value one of those more than the other, so it's a tough choice to make, but these are really both good displays. Turning to biometrics, it's also a tough decision. So Surface Book 2, by default, comes with Windows Hello facial recognition. It's absolutely phenomenal, works very well, no issues. ThinkPad gets a little bit complicated. You can get Windows Hello facial recognition, which I recommend. The trade-off there is you can't get that awesome Dolby Vision HDR display, which I just raved about. So instead, you get a fingerprint reader, which to be honest, on a laptop ain't a bad thing, except for this one. It's not good at all. I really do not like this fingerprint reader. I have to rest my finger on there for one to two seconds, which may not sound like a long time. It kind of is though. And the accuracy is just not good. When it comes to audio and sound, well, Surface Book 2 puts those speakers next to the display. They are front firing. In fact, they're kind of face firing if you think about it. Really good audio. Not a lot of bass, but I don't make complaints about it. This is some of the best speakers you can get on a laptop. Look at the X1 Yoga though. They put the speakers on the bottom, but these are pretty good. Now, when I reviewed the X1 Carbon, I said I didn't really like the audio at all, but with the Yoga, they changed things up quite a bit much better speakers. And although they're downwards firing, if you rotate this around, you now get upward firing speakers. Still, Service Book 2 is going to beat it out, but these are pretty good speakers overall. All right, so what about ports? Well, ThinkPad X1 Yoga is gonna definitely win out for the majority of you. That is, it just has more ports and more options, and there's really no sacrifice here. So you get two USB Type-C, and yes, Thunderbolt 3 full PCIe lanes. You can do an eGPU on this, plug in two 4K displays running at 60 hertz, you got it all here. Plus you have your legacy USB-A ports. I know some people get mad, I call them legacy, but just go with it. Now when it comes to storage, you can get a micro SD slot in the back. It's not really convenient and I don't really like micro SD cards, but they are compatible with a lot of modern cameras and smartphones and I guess that's why it's there. You also get an LTE option, which well, it's in theory, you have an option. You can't order it yet, but you should be able to in a couple months. But if you want to get a modem with this, you can, in theory, get a modem with it. And for me, that's a huge deal. You do not get that with Surface Book 2 at all. Additionally, on the X1 Yoga, you can get a full HDMI port, which when I go to hotels, I just want to plug into the TV, I still find very useful. And obviously those in business prefer to use it too. So nice option there. You also have their weird ethernet dongle thing. So what they did is they built ethernet into the motherboard, but the connector is just too big for this device. So they have a dongle that acts as the connector. That's an extra purchase, but that allows you to get very high speed internet wired through this device. Again, important to some people. Now, Service Book 2, obviously a lot of compromise, but not in all areas. Now you're gonna get two USB Type-A ports, which is pretty nice. You also get a USB Type-C port, which is new to the Service Book 2, but as everybody knows, it is not Thunderbolt 3, which means you can't do a lot with it. You can do peripherals, you can charge devices from it and to it. It's nice, you just can't do external GPUs and you can't power two 4K displays. You can power one though, so better than nothing. Now you do, however, get a full SD card slot on this device, and even I find that useful for photography. My camera still uses a full SD card slot. A lot of pros still use full SD. They're cheaper, they're faster, all that kind of stuff. That makes this the better choice for those people. So what about being a convertible? So the cool thing about both of these devices is they turn into tablets. They just do it in different ways. There's no clear winner here, although for some of you, there will be. Let me discuss, all right? So the Service Book 2 detaches as a tablet, and so you have the entire computer in the upper display. The benefit there is it makes that tablet very light. You don't, however, get all your I.O. ports now with that choice. 
There's also the time thing. It's a little clunky to hit the button. You gotta wait a second for the system to detach, lift it off, and then begin using it. I know that sounds trivial, but it's one of those things, I don't use it as a tablet very often because it feels like an extra step. Let's turn to the yoga. Yoga does it very differently. It uses the classic hinge system, so you rotate the display around. Well, that gives you many more options, including tent mode, presentation mode, you can use it as a tablet. Now you're still talking the full weight of this device, which is around three pounds as a tablet, and that makes it heavier. That's actually twice the weight of what this thing would be as a tablet, so that's gonna be a trade-off. But the benefit here with that hinge is I find myself flipping this around more often than I do using this as a tablet. That is, this is just much easier to get to. Which is better? It depends on how you use it. I think for some artists and people looking at the pen, the Service Book 2 will be a better option. But for those in business who want to do presentation mode, who like to watch movies, well, this one would be a little bit easier. Speaking of touchscreens and convertibles, let's talk about the pen. Service Book 2 does not come with one, so that's a bummer. You gotta pay $99 for that brand new Surface Pen. It's a pretty good pen. It's also expensive, but it has a cool magnet that attaches to the side of the device, so it's kind of nice to have. Plus, you get to pick your color, which is always a nice thing to have. Now, the ThinkPad Yoga is kind of cool because it has an active pen built into the system. It's more like a toothpick. It's not a full pen. It's very small, but it pops out and it charges while it's in there. In fact, 15 seconds of being in there charges it for like 100 minutes, which is kind of crazy. That convenience of having that pen there all the time is pretty awesome. So this comes down to how do you use the pen? If you're gonna use the pen all the time or frequently, Surface Book 2 is a much better choice. If you're like me though, you like the idea of a pen, you don't use it very often, but you'd like to have a device with it, well, this is the better choice. Don't forget, even that small pen, if you don't wanna use it, you can go buy an AES pen that supports this device that's bigger and more natural, including that Wacom Ink one, which I mentioned earlier. And that's another difference. This is AES, this is Intrig. I'm not gonna say one's better than the other. They're both kind of similar at this point, but it's nice you have a few more options here with this, plus it technically comes with a pen. All right, what about battery life? They're both, I would consider, nearly all day machines, but really the Surface Book 2 is gonna win out here. It's a it's very good battery life. We're talking near 10 hours easily with this. That's both the 13 and 15 inch versions. They're really the best performing Surface Books in terms of battery life. The X1 Yoga, it's good. Maybe eight hours, you could probably push it to nine. Again, this has a lot more capability if you get that HDR display of hitting 500 nits. So if you turn up that display very bright, it's going to drain the battery quickly. Likewise, Service Book 2, if you start using that GPU a lot and playing video games, you too will also drain that battery. So your mileage will vary, but if you're just doing productivity work, Surface Book 2 is gonna last longer. One other important difference between these two systems for battery, well, the X1 ThinkPad, you can swap out that battery in a couple years if you want to. It's pretty easy actually to do. So that's important if you're gonna hold on to this for like five years. Service Book 2, good luck. You'd have to probably send it in for them to swap out the battery and even then it's unguaranteed. You definitely won't be able to do it yourself. For some people, that's an important distinction. All right, what about pricing? Well, as I mentioned earlier, these are both very expensive devices, but no surprise, Surface Book 2, the more expensive ones. Now it does start off at $14.99, which is a doable price for some people, but that's the Core i5 version with 256 storage and eight gigs of RAM, and you don't get discrete graphics. So that is just the Intel UHD 620, and that's the older version, the Core i5. It's kind of a weird device to be honest, but if you like this form factor, it's a great price point for that to get in there. And it's a pretty good performer, but you're not gonna get all the cool stuff that you get in the Core i7 model. Speaking of that Core i7 model, once you throw in those NVIDIA graphics, all of a sudden you're gonna bump into $2,300 for the 13 inch, it goes up more for the 15 inch. All in all, if you were to max this system out with the 15 inch version, you're talking $3,299. Yikes, that's very expensive. Now the X1 Yoga is actually cheaper. Now. Lenovo always has sales, so it's kind of hard to pinpoint their pricing. Starts around $1,400. You can get that with the Core i5, and this maxes out around $2,500 for the Core i7, one terabyte, 16 gigabytes. That's still, though, a few hundred dollars cheaper than Surface Book. You also got a few more options here for choices when you're picking that, so it gives you a little bit more freedom to configure the device how you want. You can also get a different color. If you don't like black, you can get it in silver, which I actually prefer, and I'm thinking about ordering it myself. All right, so let's wrap it up. Is there a clear winner here? For me, there isn't. Now, I really like using Yoga. It's a fun device. It's a great keyboard, great trackpad. That HDR display is phenomenal. 
I don't love the aspect ratio though. I've talked about this endlessly. The 16 by nine to me still feels dated. The fingerprint reader is also kind of a deal killer for me. Getting an LTE modem though, if that option comes out, is really enticing though. I like this idea of taking this device anywhere, using it everywhere around the world. And the build quality on this is not necessarily better than Surface Book. It's definitely more resilient though. Uh, Lenovo is very well known for making tough devices. This meets mil spec design and testing. If you drop this, it probably won't break. But <laughs> I can't say that with Surface Book 2. Surface Book 2, it's sturdy, but it's pretty delicate. Mark and I, our videographer, have had a few stories already with Surface Book 2. In fact, you can't see it here, but my power button's a little pressed in. It's kind of annoying. You gotta be careful with the Surface Book 2. It's a tough device, but at the same time, you kinda gotta baby it a little bit. So if you're prone to dropping or you're throwing things into the bags, you're gonna get much better longevity with the X1 Carbon. All in all, these are both very good devices. I don't know, I still feel attachment to Surface Book 2 just because of that display. It's the first thing I see. I like that aspect ratio, the keyboard, and the all-day battery life really goes for me, but I have to admit, this is a nice choice as well. I don't mean go wrong with either one of them. If you're looking to save money, this is gonna be the better value. Surface Book 2 though, well, it's a little bit cooler looking. So there's a quick comparison between Surface Book 2 and the Lenovo X1 Yoga, third generation for 2018. Now, if you have an opinion of which is better, leave me a comment below. And if you want to do another versus video, tell me which devices you want. I'm thinking maybe Spectre XPS 13, or about that Huawei MateBook X versus whatever. Let me know in comments and we'll take a look at it next time. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.